This is what we're making. Spiral chain. We're going to make a spiral bracelet. 16 millimeter dowel. Drill a 1.5 hole in the end. Now we're using 1.2 millimeter wire for this. I don't do gauge, but I looked in the back of Tim McCrate's book and it says 17 gauge. That's about as close as we can get. Now we're going to use about uh, 60 centimeters of wire for this. Uh, two foot in the old money. And the 16 mil uh, dowel is 5 eighths, I think. So now that's all of the uh, old stuff you're going to get. Everything from now on is metric. So take your wire, half a meter, stick the end in the hole, and you're just going to bend that over, hold the wire in your hand, and I, I use the thumb and forefinger to hold the dowel to keep the wire from unwinding. And you're going to just twist this. You want the wire to stay nice and tight against this neighbor. And you're going to need nine or ten of these. So when you get your half meter of wire twisted, you, you can either do the whole length or you can just count the number of, uh, I guess they're jump rings. Let it spring back and at this point clip this or just pull it up so you can slip the coil off the uh, dowel. And then we're going to cut these. We're just going to use side cutters to cut these. So cut that 90 degree bend on the end off and then right where the end of your wire is even with the other piece. Use your side cutters and just cut these one at a time. You need a complete circle. Yep. So clip all of these with your side cutters and lay them out on a charcoal block. I'm using a Smith's mini torch for this. So Gas, about 100 mil long oxygen just until the orange goes out. That'll be a nice neutral flame. Now what we're going to do is we're not going to preheat any of this like you would normally in soldering. We're going to just go straight to the gap, straight to one end of the wire, about 50 mil away. So straight to the end. Actually, I'm about 30 mil away. So you just ball the end. Ball up the other end, go to the next jump ring, ball the end, ball up the other end. So this is imperfect, but what we would like would be to have a nice little ball on either end. So do all of your jump rings. If you preheat this like you would normal soldering, all this will do is turn black. Uh, and it may eventually melt the whole thing into a blob. But we just want to melt little balls on the end. Now, quench these. You don't have to pickle it at this point, And we'll form them. So you've quenched them. And it, it should look like this. Now we're just going to take our chain nose pliers, pointed pliers, and grab right behind the ball on one end. And we're just going to bend this into a spiral, just using our fingers and the pliers. And we want the outer end touching the outside edge of the wire because we're going to solder that. Uh, they don't have to be exactly the same. Aesthetically, it looks nice if they are. But just bend them all into a spiral. Make sure the outside ball touches the wire.
and put them back on your charcoal block. Now we're going to use hard solder for this and I'm using solder snippers to cut my wire and the, this makes pieces that are about two mil long. Flex the join. I guess it's not a join, it's where the outside ball touches the wire. Pick up a piece of hard solder and put it right in that groove. Do all of them. And then we're going to solder it. The same flame that we used to melt we're just going to brush on and off until the flux dries out and then we're going to circle that area and the solder will flow and if you did it correctly it'll flow to both pieces. Now be careful when you have all of your jump rings on your block because it, it would be quite easy if you're not paying attention for the spillover of the flame to melt one of these. So solder all of them. At this point quench and pickle. We're going to use four millimeter jump rings to hold this chain together. I use an aluminium knitting needle. Uh, in my cordless drill. So you just stick the end of your wire, same size wire, 1.2, straight in the chuck, bend it 90 degrees, and because it's a cordless drill it'll go as slow as you want. Um, I'm just letting it slip between my thumb and forefinger and I'm holding it so that it winds itself quite nicely onto the knitting needle. Now when you get the number of jump rings you need, take it out, snip off the ends with your side cutters. And the easy way to cut this is just to hold it on your bench peg, push down very tightly, and cut at about a 45 degree angle and you're just going to cut one jump ring at a time. Until you get to the last couple and then when you get to the last two it's too difficult to hold with your fingers and we use the parallel jaw pliers. So I've taken these out of the pickle, rinse them, dry them off, Always dry the metal before you put it on steel. Now at this point you can either assemble your chain or you can slightly flatten these to give them a little more personality. Just what you want to do. It's up to you. So I just use a steel bench block. It's got a nice shiny surface. Use a uh, planishing hammer and use the slightly rounded end. I'll zoom in so you can see. So I'm just going to gently hammer this. Now all I did was slightly flatten the balls I didn't flatten the wire and I would suggest you do that. That way it won't deform it. It'll just give the balls a little definition. Now we're going to assemble, assemble the chain and what I do is I lay the links out so that they're all the same. It doesn't really matter. It's up to you. But if you lay them out this way when you take your jump ring and start assembling it's quite easy to uh, get them all the same. So we're going to use parallel jaw pliers for this. 
Open your jump rings by twisting it sideways and put your rings on. Close it and push the wire slightly together. Then as you push it, you'll get to the point where it's a perfect fit. And that's what we want because it'll, it'll be easy to solder it that way. So just keep assembling till you get it all done. And then we'll put this on a third hand to solder these jump rings one at a time. So get it all assembled, check for length, wrap it around your wrist, and you'll notice that there is a jump ring on this end, there's nothing on this end. And I've left that because we're going to make a hook. We'll solder the hook, then we'll put this on, and then we'll solder that. So the same wire, 1.2 mil, file the end flat, cut a piece 45 mil long, file the other end flat.